Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the Jackery Explorer 1000 Portable Power Station. Now, several months ago I had published a video on building a solar generator, and a lot of the input I received said, dude, why didn't you just go and buy a Jackery? Um, of course, I had never heard of the company before, so I looked them up, and they have some very nice products. So I reached out to them, and they generously sent this out to me to review and talk about and share with you guys. So I thought the best way to do this is we'll go over the features of the Jackery Explorer 1000 itself, then we're going to do a capacity test on the device, and we're going to do a little bit of load testing to see what it can and cannot power. Uh, so my first impressions of this device are pretty good. It's, it's very rugged. It's a solid design. It doesn't feel like cheapish plastic like some of the stuff I received before. It definitely feels like, you know, this could take a lot of beating and still continue to work and work and work. So yeah, this device has a 1002 watt hour NMC lithium ion battery. It is built with standard 18650 cells and it contains a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter that is temporarily surgible up to 2000 watts. For charging this we have both a barrel connector and an Anderson power pole connector. There is a button to turn on the display here and you can see presently we're right around 76% charged. Additionally we have three outlets. These outlets are nicely spaced apart that way if you have like a transformer or something like that to plug in that typically spans a larger area, your transformer is not going to block adjoining outlets. And then we also have a 12 volt 10 amp accessory port. It's the standard like cigarette plug you'd see in automobiles. We have two USB-C connections, a USB 2.4 amp and a USB quick charge. This quick charge is excellent if your device supports it, such as my Samsung Galaxy S10. On the side we just have an air vent. There's an air vent on both sides and then we have a little LED lamp you can turn on and off as needed. And the manual that comes out with it is well written as well. There are no spelling mistakes or anything like that which you would typically see in cheaper devices. Um, you have a nice layout, some of the charging and recharging parameters, some safety specifications, and then what I consider the most important page, the specifications of the device itself. So the weight of the device is 22 pounds. Like I said, it's a 1002 watt hour battery. Uh, and it supports an input range of 12 to 30 volts. This actually features a built-in MPPT charge controller, so the charging is very efficient. And as far as temperature goes, you can operate it down to negative 10 degrees Celsius, but you need to be above freezing for it to begin charging. And just a quick bit of interesting information, one of the co-founders of the Jackery company was actually a former engineer at Apple. Now, before we can do any testing of this device, I want to get it charged up to 100%. And to charge the Jackery, we could use the AC adapter it came with, so this adapter is good for 24 volts at 7.5 amps or 180 watts. And one thing that stood out to me with this particular adapter is this carries a UL certification. And that is a great mark of quality in my opinion. Most uh, cheap adapters on the market do not carry this UL certification. But of course, why would we charge this with grid power when we could charge it with solar? So I have here two panels from Jackery. These are the Solar Saga 100, and they are 100 watts each at 18 volts. And the nice thing about these panels is they fold up super compact. So you can see how thin this design is, and it's easy to store anywhere, whether that be in a closet, behind a bed, in a van, or a camper. And when you're ready to use it, simply fold it out. And then there are two kickstands in the back which will provide support. And then when you're ready to charge your Jackery, uh, you simply pull out the cable from the back and you plug it directly into the input port. And after a few seconds, your Jackery will turn on and we can see it's charging around 52 watts currently. Now we are starting to get close to winter here and the sun is not at an optimal angle anymore. So uh, I would expect more if you're in a better location. You'll notice we have two panels here, but we only plugged one in. So Jackery also includes this parallel adapter with the Explorer 1000. Two barrel connectors on the input, and then you can plug it into the Anderson port. So, simply unplug that. We'll plug in our adapter to the input, and we'll plug in one panel, and we'll plug in the other panel. And you can see we're now getting 115 to 116 watts between the two panels total. So yeah, we're gonna leave this charge for a bit, and then we'll be back to do some follow-up testing. All right, so the sun has come out nice and bright since I started this charging originally, and I've also re-angled these solar panels, and I'm up to around 130 watts of charge now. Now, I did do a bit of testing as well, thinking, okay, I'll plug one panel into the Anderson power pole and one panel into the barrel connector. However, when you do that, it doesn't actually combine both of these ports. 
it seems that it switches priorities. You saw it just went to zero watts and now it went back up. It seems it switches priority to whatever is plugged in the barrel connector and that has a higher precedence in terms of charging. It will not accept input from both of these ports at the same time. So the only way to connect two panels is to use the included adapter, which unfortunately does appear to limit it to around 130 watts total. All right guys, so I got the Jackery out here in the garage and if I turn the display on, you can see it is 100% charged. Now to measure the capacity of this, I'm going to use this kilowatt meter and this is model number P4400. And what this will do is measure the amount of watts coming through the meter itself. So we can see the amount of power that this inverter has put out. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the AC output. And you can hear the fan start up there briefly and then shut back off. I'll plug in my kilowatt meter. Uh, so we're getting 109.9 volts at the output. And I just have a few incandescent light bulbs out in my garage. I'm going to plug in as a resistive load. So you can hear right away the fan kicked down on the side. The kilowatt meter is reporting a 259 watt load and the jacker is reporting a 237 watt load. So there does appear to be a little bit of difference between these two displays. So I'm going to switch this meter into kilowatt hour mode. I'm gonna leave this load run until the jackery shuts off and I'll come back out and we'll see how much power has been consumed. All right guys, so this test finished right around 820 watt hours of power. To be honest, I did expect a little more. However, with this being a 1002 watt hour battery, you have to factor in the efficiency of the inverter. Now there is no indication in the manual what the efficiency is. However, my guess would be anywhere between 85 to 90% efficient. Additionally, we had this fan running almost the entire time cooling the unit down, which was consuming power from the battery. While 820 watt hours does seem a bit low, I think if you were to utilize the DC port, you would see much better efficiency. Now there would still be a little bit of loss because there is an internal DC-DC converter to regulate the 12 volt output. However, that would be significantly more efficient than the AC conversion itself. So I charge this back up overnight. You can see it is at 100% state of charge currently. So now I wanna plug in a few appliances and see if this can power them. Now I've watched quite a few YouTubers doing load tests on these sort of things and they typically plug in some light bulbs or something like that and say, hey, it works. I wanna see what it cannot power and see what its failure point is. So I have here a standard space heater and the setting on low should be well below 1000 watts. So we'll plug it in and see how it works. So first we'll turn on the AC output, plug in our space heater and we'll turn it on low. All right, so that's making some very nice heat here and we're averaging around 760 watts. It's still slowly increasing, I guess, as the element heats up. However, there are no problems at all. The fan is running and it is moving a large volume of air. So while I would not recommend running a space heater, I think the manual actually says not to run a space heater. It definitely can do it. All right, so next up, I have a small microwave oven. This microwave is rated for 1350 watts on the input label that this should be able to surge it for, but the question is, can it start it and how long will it run? So I've just got a coffee mug full of water in there. Here we go. And it's powering it. The output says 967. It's just under a thousand watts. That is pretty cool. And there we go. So yes, the Jackery Explorer 1000 can run a standard size microwave. All right. So last but not least, I have a small 5,000 BTU air conditioner. Now this air conditioner is rated for, I think it was like 450 watts. However, the question is going to be, can the surge rating of this Jackery start the compressor of the air conditioner? Now I did have to mount my Jackery up on a small piece of two x six, so I can fit this Arcafault plug in, because you'll see that the cable comes down a little bit there and there wasn't enough clearance. Um, so go ahead and plug it in. It may actually be colder than 61 in the garage. I'm not sure here, let's see. All right, so I can see where the temperature sensor is down in there. So I'm just going to try to trick this by holding the space heater up to it a little bit and see if we can get it to start. And there it goes. The Jackery Explorer 1000 has started the compressor of the air conditioner. The Jackery did make an interesting noise when it kicked on. However, it did successfully start it. I'm getting cold air in the output. And according to the display, we're only pulling 300 watts. So this does appear to have a very, very good surge rating. 
So that is actually pretty cool. I tried three different devices and I was unable to get this to shut down. All right, so as a final test, I wanna see how the shutdown actually works. So I'm going to plug the space heater back into it and turn it on high and see how long this runs before it shuts down in safety mode. And we can see we're at 1100 watts, 1400 watts, still running. Oh, there it shut down, it's now in safety mode. And you can see a little symbol has emitted on the bottom right to indicate it has shut down. So that lasted a good 15 or so seconds. That's a pretty good overload rating, I would say. All right, guys, so there's my review of the Jackery Explorer 1000. This is a well-built, solid, rugged device. It's got excellent surge capabilities. If you're interested in purchasing one of these devices, they are currently $100 off on both Amazon and Jackery's official website. I will leave a link to where you can purchase Jackery as well as the Solar Saga panels in the description of the video below. I'd love to hear what you guys think, either if you have a Jackery yourself or based on my tests and what you saw me do. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and thank you very much for watching.